So it's estimated about 30% of all crops are zinc deficient, which means there's a 30% chance this video is for you. And if you're in this part of the 70%, keep watching uh, because having excess zinc or a really good amount of zinc in your crops is actually a really, really good idea. So today in this video, we'll be talking about zinc and how to manage zinc in a regenerative way and how I manage zinc using regenerative frameworks uh, with my clients. The most important thing you need to know about zinc is that it is a very significant cofactor to a lot of enzymes and proteins uh, in the plant. It's a cofactor of over 3,000 different enzymes, and so there's, there's a whole range of different things that zinc is super important for. So we're not gonna go into all 3,000 of those enzymes. The most important ones will be what we're talking about today, and they're important because we, uh, we can influence them in terms of our crop production. So they are, the very first one, the most important is zinc is required as a cofactor in auxin production. Now, auxin is a plant hormone that stimulates cell elongation. And so it's uh, it's almost the hormone responsible for the vegetative growth of the plant. So that's important because it uh, regulates leaf size. And so in a way, zinc regulates auxin production, auxin production or auxin regulates leaf size. Now, leaf size is important because the bigger leaves you have and the more, uh, the more surface area of your leaves, the more photosynthesis that's going to occur, the more photosynthesis, the higher yields, and we'll be getting to that in a moment. Um, but effectively, you wanna make sure you've got a good zinc supply, otherwise you're going to have stunted leaves. Um, and it's not even a, a deficiency, we'll cause that. To get an even bigger leaf size, you wanna make sure your plant has luxury amounts of zinc. Um, it's one of those things where sometimes we're not looking at just making sure there's no deficiency, we're making sure we have a healthy plant, which means we need lots of zinc to do that. So that's super important, and we can get some pretty good yield boosts doing this. Now, as I mentioned before, about a third of, or 30% of uh, the crops across the world are zinc deficient, which means there's a good opportunity to be able to make foliar applications to your plants and get that yield increase. So that's a big one, oxen production. Now, oxen production is also required in the elongation of, and I said cells before, but included within that is elongation of uh, cells within the roots. And so zinc is quite important for increasing uh, the root area, which also means you can ex explore further down into the soil profile, and that's super important too. So zinc is very much tied to uh, biomass production and growth, and making sure we have zinc I'm sure we have that. Now, next we have protein synthesis. Zinc is required in the ribosome, um, which takes the amino acids and put them together into proteins. What that looks like is that uh, when we have, say, we convert all our ammonium into amino acids, and we've got to convert these amino acids into complete proteins. We need zinc as well as magnesium uh, to do that. When we don't have zinc, we can't convert those amino acids into proteins, which means we get a build up, which attracts pests and disease. So you can see here in this table, which is taken out of this book here, uh, an excellent book about uh, plant nutrition, you'll see that in a zinc deficient plant, there is a six times increase in amino acids that's not getting converted into proteins. And then in the zinc sufficient plant, you get, uh, I think a doubling, a uh, 2x increase in the protein content. So that's super important in, in terms of two things. Increases your protein content in, in your grain. So for example, we'll get to this in a moment, increase in your grain protein in say wheat, which means premiums, uh, or, but also increase in your nitrogen use efficiency. Because if we can convert more of that nitrogen into protein, it means we don't need to apply as much nitrogen. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. So quite important for protein synthesis. And finally, another important component it's used for is in what's called the copper zinc superoxide dismutase. It's effectively a very powerful antioxidant and it captures radical oxygen species or free radicals uh, and neutralizes them. So this is quite important for uh, reducing the oxidative stress on the plant. And so zinc is can, uh, can help with that. Then the main ones, oxygen production is probably the biggest. So making sure we have zinc for that Super important. So I came across this really interesting study, you can check it out here, and effectively they're just applying foliar uh, zinc to wheat. Now, what they found was a massive increase in leaf area, so they went from 41 in the control, so it's control, this is with a foliar application of uh, zinc sulfate, 
And we'll talk about kind of these different forms that we can apply it in, in a moment. But basically they, they applied the zinc sulfate or the zinc follow application and they got effectively a 30% increase in their leaf size. So a 30% increase in their leaf size is massive. So if you went to someone growing pasture and said, hey, I can increase your pasture by effectively 30%, they'd go, what are you going to apply nitrogen or something? You go zinc, it's a bit, it's a bit odd. You don't quite think of getting a 30% increase in your, in your leaf size or effectively more or less biomass. Uh, to, uh, to, to lesser extent biomass, but increasing your biomass with a zinc application. So that's, that's massive. Next is the height of the plant. Now this can be beneficial or not, just depending on lodging. Um, from a biomass point of view, this is helpful. So that was a 9% increase, so not bad. Next is where it gets interesting because it increased the number of uh, grains per spike from 40 to 50, almost 52. Now, if you think about that, the more grain you have across a hectare, means the more they can get filled up with carbohydrates, the higher your yield. And so going from 40 to 52 was a 28% increase in the number of grains uh, per spike. So that's that's a massive increase. Next is protein content. Now, typically uh, increasing your protein content is gonna increase or get you uh, yield premiums. Uh, to some extent, now, once you get too high, you're not really gonna get those premiums anymore. What this was, so this went from 15 to almost 19%. So get, really getting up in the, high, in the higher um, protein content. This might actually not be that beneficial, except in the fact that potentially they've over applied nitrogen, which means looking at these, hey, could we step back our nitrogen application and take for, uh, go from a say a 12 to a 15, that would be that would be quite beneficial. So that was a 26% increase in the amount of protein. Now the thing is, they didn't apply more nitrogen. They just converted the nitrogen that were amino acids into complete proteins. And they got a 26% increase in your protein content. So again, you could reduce your uh, nitrogen application by 26%, and you get more or less a very similar protein content. And now the thing you've been waiting for yield. It went from the control of 182 grams to 237. And that is a 30% increase. So with one, oh no, it was two applications of a zinc folia, they increased their yields by 30%, which is phenomenal. To think that you can get a 30% increase in your yield from a non-nitrogen application is crazy. So, this just goes to show that both zinc is important, but it's also very important to pay attention to your trace minerals. And now in terms of the parts per million of the zinc actually in the plant, they went from about two parts per million to 10 or nearly, nearly 11 parts per million. Um, typically what I'm seeing in the weight I'm working with is somewhere between two, three, maybe five. So getting that even up further could drive um, some yields. Now we don't quite know. We don't quite know that this is linear or if it's you know gone up and then down because this is an excess of zinc and uh, zinc toxicity is definitely a real thing. But checking your zinc levels using a differential sap test super important because we can then make an application or know if we need to make an application to try and get this yield increase. So when we think about making sure our plant has enough zinc, what we will first want to do is check our totals. So zinc exists more or less in two stages or phases in our soil. So we have total zinc. This is more the zinc that's locked up in our parent material. Typically what we want to make sure is that the zinc in our total is greater than 20 parts per million. That will mean that we actually have enough zinc in our, in our actual parent material or from the total component of our soil to actually draw upon either with our biology or it just becomes available with weathering. So then when we're looking at the available zinc, we're looking at uh, anywhere between three to six parts per million. And so three is the ideal in more of that sandy soil and six is more that ideal in a heavy clay. Somewhere in between there uh, is the right number or the ideal number for your soil. And then if you're using say a Haney soil test, it'll be somewhere in between there. So we'll say four to five parts per million for a Haney soil test. So what this tells us is that Say we've got enough uh, zinc in our total component, it means that we have enough zinc to actually draw upon. If we have zinc available to us, it means that the plant should be able to take it up. 
but not necessarily because there's a lot of factors that antagonize zinc uptake. So the factors that antagonize zinc uptake uh, include, and the most important one is phosphorus. So phosphorus and supplying way too much phosphorus will antagonize zinc uptake. Now, phosphorus and zinc have a very odd relationship where zinc can stimulate phosphorus uptake, but too much phosphorus in the soil can uh, inhibit zinc uptake. The other components that would antagonize zinc uptake is iron, those manganese, calcium, and uh, magnesium. So really any cation that shares similar uh, uptake pathways would antagonize zinc, but especially phosphorus. Phosphorus tends to antagonize zinc. And so if you're making a lot of uh, capital P uh, applications to your soil and trying to build up your uh, phosphorus, it can be a good idea to check your zinc levels and, and potentially apply a bit of zinc or at least do a follow application to get those zinc levels up. Now it talks about differential SAP tests uh, just then as well. And so what we do is we look at the total, we look at available, but because we've got all of this interaction effect from these minerals, and we don't truly know how the zinc or how much zinc is getting into the plant, we like to take a differential SAP test analysis as well. And so what that looks like is we have our plant like this. We're going to take uh, two samples, one from the oldest leaf, and one from the youngest leaf. So you take a sample of each, put them in a bag, send them off to the labs, and you get your parts per million of zinc and all your other minerals. And then we compare uh, the variation in those minerals. And so we're looking for a difference of 10% to suggest a deficiency between uh, the concentration in the youngest and oldest. And so the reason for that is that zinc is more or less immobile, which means it'll come out from the soil, it'll get loaded into the oldest leaf, which was back then the youngest. So the, the zinc went up, loaded into there. The plant continued growing and then continued growing. If the soil stopped supplying zinc at any stage, this would come up deficient in the plant. Now that can be a little bit hair going because, well, say the plant wasn't getting enough zinc in the first place, then it's not as, uh, not as accurate. And so it can be a bit iffy, but overall it's a really good indicator of a deficiency. And so what we then do is say that's the case, if our zinc is looking to be deficient in the plant, or if we kind of want to increase it a bit higher towards that higher range, then we can make a follow application. But the thing is we're looking at all these different parts and going, okay, do we have enough in the total? Is that total then getting moved into the available? And only microbes and soil biology allow for that process. And then we're looking at, okay, is this zinc actually getting into the plant? And we know that with our differential sepsis analysis. Now zinc is only really available in the two plus. So we don't have to worry about oxidation states with this one, not like iron or um, manganese, which makes it um, pretty easy to understand what's going on. And so from a regenerative management point of view, what we wanna be doing is working with our biology to make sure we're getting a conversion from our total zinc into our available zinc. But the, the most important thing for the zinc management from a regenerative point of view is using mycorrhizal fungi to supply the zinc to the plant. So mycorrhizal fungi, they form uh, a symbiotic relationship with our plants. And so say that's the root system, the mycorrhizal fungi will go into the root system uh, and effectively extend it a lot further out. And so because zinc is quite immobile in the soil, once the plant has uh, extracted all the zinc around itself, it then relies on mycorrhizal fungi or continued growth to then access more zinc. And so if there's a bit of zinc over here, that mycorrhizal fungi can then go out, scavenge that zinc, and then supply it back to the plant. So making sure we have a really good mycorrhizal fungi population is super important for uh, not just zinc uptake, but also phosphorus and all our other minerals, but especially with our zinc. And so the way to get really good mycorrhizal fungi populations is firstly inoculating your seed with mycorrhizal fungi spores. Um, that can be expensive, so it might be beneficial to do that only after long fallows or after a brassica crop, and brassicas don't uh, colonize or form this symbiotic relationship with mycorrhizal fungi. So 
if you have a fallow and then a brassica crop, say a canola, and then you put in wheat in, well, it might be a good idea to then inoculate that wheat with uh, mycoles of fungi. Otherwise, we can really increase it with diverse cover crops or a fodder crop, trying to get away from fungicides and, re and reducing the amount of tillage we, we're doing. And so really, there's not too much involved in terms of the regenerative management of zinc. It's just making sure the plant actually has it in the soil. So when it does come to fertilizers, there's really two typical fertilizers that I'd recommend. The first one is zinc sulfate. You can either apply that onto your soil. So if you don't have sufficient amounts of total zinc, you can apply zinc uh, sulfate um, as a liquid application so you get a uniform distribution across your paddock using a boom. That's quite good. You can add fulvic acid just to help with all that. You could also apply this as a foliar. Again, with fulvic acid, it increases the uh, uptake. Otherwise, you can use a uh, zinc chelate. And the chelating agent will depend on the manufacturer and, and what they're putting in. Ideally, I'd prefer either a humic acid, so uh, a humic substance chelator, which is that fulvic acid. Uh, otherwise, uh, mineral acid chelator is also pretty good and you can get some uh, inorganic compounds as well. So there's a few others like zinc oxide, uh, but they're the main ones. And typically, we're only really going to be Follow applying it unless you're in a really light sandy soil, in which case you might want to apply some to your soil. So that's really it when it comes to managing zinc with uh, regenerative principles. Just making sure you have zinc in the soil, you've got biology moving into available, you've got mycoles of fungi delivering it to the plant, and if all, the fa uh, and if all that fails, applying a folate application of zinc so you get all these benefits. There is a few references to disease management with zinc um, in this book here. Fantastic book. The thing is, it doesn't seem like you can pinpoint disease management uh, to any one particular mode of action with zinc. And I'd assume it's across all those 3,000 different uh, enzymes that zinc is involved in and just overall increase in plant health with increased effectively photosynthesis and uh, protein synthesis. But overall, there is a uh, immune benefit or disease tolerance benefit from zinc. So there you go. If you do have a soil test, you can actually use our free soil test analyzer uh, to know exactly how much zinc you need and how much to apply. So there's little recommendations at the end there. Otherwise, if you're using differential SAP test analysis, we have a free differential SAP test tool um, on our website as well, completely free. Uh, that will spit out a, a recommendation for you just to know that variation between your crop. Doesn't require species or uh, stages of growth because we're looking at variation and we're just looking at what the plant is telling us. Otherwise, if you want to implement any of these practices on your own farm, you can sign up for a free consult, sit down with me for about 30 minutes, and we'll go over the most important things that you can implement on your farm for this season. Um, you get action plan and then go from there. So thanks again for watching. My name's Teal. Cheers.